hot data allows you to superimpose renaturation kinetic data from two or more different samples or sources of DNA. So what can we say from all this? Prokaryotic genomes are largely composed of unique or non-repetitive sequence DNA, most of which are genes that encode proteins, along with genes that encode ribosomal RNAs and transfer RNAs. But what's the situation in eukaryotes? Just what kinds of DNA are actually repeated and what kinds are unique? You would expect perhaps that satellite DNA and ribosomal RNAs and the transposable elements which we mentioned before, which were all known to exist by the late 1960s, you might expect them to belong to one of the repetitive DNA classes. Well, here's what you can do with renaturation experiments that enables you to ask those questions. These kinetic experiments actually allow you to separate the cot fractions. The high cot, meaning the unique material, the middle cot, and the low cot the fractions off the different regions of our graph. Once you separate them, you can actually do experiments that allow you to determine whether a given cot fraction contains one or another of these kinds of genes, ribosomal RNA genes, tRNA genes, for example, satellite DNA, and other sequences. Later, with the advent of recombinant DNA technology, it became possible to determine the redundancy level of any gene that you could clone. Let me tell you briefly how these kinds of experiments might have been done. So you can get, say, ribosomal RNA itself, which is a large percentage of the RNA in a cell, and you could make it radioactive. If you then mix it with highly repeated DNA, middle repeated DNA, or unique fractions of DNA that have been heated to 100 degrees to separate the double-stranded DNA, and then allowed to cool in the presence of the ribosomal RNA, which has been made radioactive, you would be asking which DNA fraction will form an RNA-DNA double strand, an RNA-DNA hybrid, using ribosomal RNA. You could even do the same thing with satellite DNA, which just comes right off of the cesium chloride gradient, make it radioactive, mix it with denatured, highly repetitive, middle repetitive, and unique fraction DNA, and see which one it would form a radioactive double strand with. So let's take a look at the results. Genes for proteins turn out to hybridize only to the unique DNA that takes a long time to anneal and are found in the high cut value fractions. Ribosomal RNA genes, and by the way also transposons, can be shown to hybridize to moderately repeated DNA, the middle value cut fractions. Short, repeated AT-rich regions, that's adenosine and, and thymine rich regions, and satellite DNAs, which can be repeated up to 100,000 to a million times, they hybridized to the low cut value fraction, that is to say, to the highly repeated DNA fraction. 